Okay, with the unveiling of Wildcat's Revenge, how about we do a review? What do you think of when I say Kennywood? You might think of one of the three classic woodies, Potato Patch or the record-breaking Still Kern. But for me and many other enthusiasts, we think of Phantom's Revenge. A 2001 Morgan Hypercoaster that uses the train to its advantage. But let's go back a bit. Not that far, though. The year was 1990, and Kennywood unveiled the record-breaking roller coaster, Steel Phantom, an aerodynamics hyper with four inversions and a second drop height of 225 feet down a ravine. After declining attendance, the Phantom was retired after 10 years of operation. Luckily, Kennywood hired D.H. Morgan to retract the first half and completely renovate the second half, removing the inversions for airtime heels to create Phantom's Revenge. And wow, what an improvement. Once boarding the very sleek trains, you find yourself a loose seat belt and a lap bar that gives you an absurd amount of room. And trust me, you want that. After dispatching from the station, you go down a small drop into a slight right turn into the lift, climbing up 160 feet before plumbing down a twisted drop that will turn you 180 degrees into straight track. So the pullout gives minor positives. Once you have traversed this section, you will climb up a sizable hill which turns slightly to the right before you stare down the ride's signature 228 foot drop, providing a quick pop of ejector in the back before feeling more like a drop tower than anything, thanks to its level slope. You'll fly through Thunderbolt, a classic Woody, providing one of the craziest head choppers out there. Then you reach the bottom of the drop, hitting your top speed of 85 miles per hour. They don't call this thing a speed machine for nothing. Then you enter a very drawn out helix. The bottom out is rather forceful, while the helix provides minor laterals, but nothing major. You will turn to the right before passing through Thunderbolt twice more, with an airtime moment in between. This is the most powerful moment of air on the ride, but it's also the quickest. You will do a turn around the turtle and down a small drop. Here is where you will find out the ride should not be going this fast. Providing powerful ejector to every row, you will barely have enough time to return to your seat until you are ejected again over an airtime hill. And now time for the double down. Other than the second drop, this is the highlight of the ride. Yes, it has a trim, which isn't very noticeable. You enter the first tip, providing quick ejector before being thrown into your lap bar and shoved into your seat. And immediately ejected again. This element is very violent. You'll do a semi-drawn-out turnaround into an airtime hill. Then one last pop of airtime for people up front, popping up into the quite short brake run. I also want to bring up the famous night ride it gives. You cannot see a thing going down the second drop and miss the ride, including most airtime moments, providing a better ride experience that the day doesn't compete with. If you can, I'd highly recommend you give it a try, and I'm sure you'll love it. So if you couldn't tell already, I absolutely love this ride. It's actually my current number one overall. Everything lived up to the hype. The second drop, the finale, and of course, the ASMR of the arrow chain lift. So how would I rate this ride? Well, it has its flaws. Canwood's ops can be horrible, but when they're running two trains, they're on point. And the prime ride time is only about 45 seconds with it having over 3,200 feet of track. So with this, I'll have to give it a 9.5 out of 10. The experience overall may not always be the best, but the ride is legendary. And don't forget the very energetic Ops. Shout out to the Op at the control panel, who is obviously an enthusiast this year at Phantom Fall Fest. So what do you guys think about Pennsylvania's best roller coaster? Subscribe for more.